the reason I want to have this call is because I don't want you guys to be scared. Um, we're three months into this in the medical world and we understand this disease. Um, and so I'm going to go through kind of ways to protect your family. Um, and then what to do if and when, um, given the size of this call, it's a when um, um, someone gets COVID and how um, we can protect our circle. Um, you may hear a little inflection in my voice, like I'm emotional. Um, it's not because I'm scared. It's actually the opposite. Um, for the first time in a while, I'm actually not scared. Um, and so I'm going to share with you why, uh, why that is. So just a quick um, introduction as to what's going on in New York. Um, I work at probably the premier hospital in New York City. Um, it is a 1,200 bed hospital. Um, we do everything from surgery to transplants, lung transplants, heart transplants. Um, at this point, we do none of that, almost none of that. Um, our hospital is almost exclusively a COVID-19 hospital. Um, and so people enter through a secure gate in the front, um, where in the past, what I've been doing is seeing old people with pneumonias or seeing people with bleeds. Um, almost exclusively what I do all day long is see people with COVID-19. Um, but we're learning and we know a lot. And what I want you guys to know is that um, every single day we're getting better. We know more. And I am confident that the stuff I can tell you today um, should make you guys feel um, like when this comes to your community, that you don't have to be scared and that you can protect your family. So I think the first thing is, how do you get COVID? Um, and I think that this is really important and we've really learned a lot um, over the last couple of weeks to months about how you get this disease. And so the overarching theme is sustained contact with someone who has this disease, which the vast majority is people with fever and aches, or someone who is about to get the disease. So someone in the next one to two days who is gonna develop symptoms of this disease. And so the way that you get this is the transmission of the virus almost exclusively from your hands to your face. From your hands to your face. And so it's either into your eyes, into your nose, or into your mouth. So there's a lot of talk about contact or getting it through contact, hands to face. There's also a small thought that it can be aerosolized, that it can kind of exist a little bit in the air. The thought at this point is that you actually have to have very long sustained contact with someone. And I'm talking about over 15 to 30 minutes in an unprotected environment, meaning you're in a very closed room without any type of mask for you to get it that way. But to very simply state, the overwhelming majority of people are getting this by physically touching someone who has this disease or will develop it in the next one to two days and then touching their face. And so that actually I think is incredibly empowering. And that's as I've been in the hospital the last two days, I've, the, the thing that makes me smile a little bit is that I actually know now that I won't get this disease because I know how to protect myself. And so I just wanna give you guys a few very, very practical tips to how to protect yourself. Always know where your hands are and have Purell. When you touch stuff that's outside your home, just make sure that you're washing your hand. Start to learn how to not touch your face. A really good way to do that is to start wearing a mask when you're out. And if you wanna practice, wear a mask when you're home. You don't need an N95 mask or, or a medical mask. Any mask will do because this is not preventing the disease. This is training you. And then the fourth thing is stay three to six feet away from people. So that is the nitty gritty of not how to give yourself this disease or get it from your community um, where it is at this time. So I think this, when you understand those four rules, the next thing that I think is so important becomes true. You don't have to be scared of the outside world now. You don't have to be scared of your neighbor. And I have actually found that to be incredibly liberating right now. 
when you understand this disease and know exactly what to do to prevent getting it, then it allows us for the next couple of weeks to months to be able to, to sustain the system that we have. If you can protect yourself and you know your family's safe, then I think that's empowering. Socially, it's incredibly important, and we did this at my mom's house, is you have to shrink your social circle. Find your isolation group. Find your, um, your, your group of three people, four people, your family, um, and set boundaries. That is it. They can still go to the store, and you can go to the store without any fear because you know if you wash your hands and you don't touch your face, you're not going to get this disease. What do you do if you get this disease? And this is, I think, if you listen to nothing else through this entire thing, just please listen to this part. In Wuhan, China, um, throughout the world, the vast majority of spread of COVID-19 is through home and family transmission. I think if you have something that feels like a cold or you feel like you're getting sick, is take the precautions like you have COVID-19 for one to two days. If in one to two days you're feeling much better, and this is like the thousand other colds that you've had in the past year because you have kids, you don't have COVID-19. And then you can go back to your completely normal um, living at home life with your family. So I think it's just important. The, the place we get into danger is people being too cavalier when they're developing symptoms and giving, um, exposing their family too early. And then when they get fevers and they're staying at home is that they're having too, in, too much interaction with your family. You can have COVID-19 in your house and everyone else not get it and be protected and be completely safe. There are a couple exceptions to that, and I think this is important. If you have a vulnerable population in your family, so if you're living with your um, lovely 95-year-old grandmother, um, if you know there's someone in your house who had recent chemotherapy and someone in the house gets sick, you need to find another living arrangement for that patient or practice incredibly, incredibly strict isolation of that family member. We know that the, the older population is the, the sickest population um, when they get this disease. And so that is the one caveat to the, you, it's safe to stay home with your family is if you have someone who's incredibly vulnerable, you need to um, set up a situation in the house where they're completely isolated from the person who is sick. Um, maybe you could have another person um, take care of that family member in your house so you have no interaction. But simply being in the home with someone with COVID-19 will not get you that disease. This is where I'm probably the most <laughs> qualified person in the country to, co to comment on um, what it looks like when people are coming into the hospital and sick. So first, who should go to the hospital? If you're feeling short of breath, come to the hospital. That is the rule. That is the clearest thing. It's not, I have a fever. It's not, I think I have COVID-19. It's not, I can't stop having those body aches. It's, I feel short of breath when I get up to go to the bathroom. Those are people that should come to the hospital and be evaluated. Of the entire population of people who get COVID-19, about 10% need to go to the hospital because they get short of breath. Of the 10% who are coming to the hospital, about one to two to 3% of those are requiring admission to the ICU and to be put on a ventilator. So what happens when people get put on ventilators? The vast majority of people, overwhelming majority of people, come off the ventilator. And they usually come off the ventilator seven to 10 um, days later. Um, but I, I think the important thing for you guys to know is going to the hospital is not a death sentence. It's a safe place for you to be. Um, go to the hospital when you're short of breath. Don't go to the hospital just because you have COVID-19. Should I get tested if I have the disease? If I'm a generic 35-year-old who's sick, I think it depends on the availability of testing in your community. What we know right now, now that people are home, is that if you have, and not having a lot of social contact, is that if you have diseases, like if you have symptoms like the flu, it's likely you have COVID-19. And nothing that I've told you about behavior about interacting with your family, a lot of that stuff would change by knowing that test result. The caveat is, is if your community, whether that's New York or Tennessee, is testing a lot and you have clear access to testing, absolutely getting the test is a good idea. 
because when it's negative, then in a day when you're feeling better, you can have full interaction with your family. So I think that is the key. But if you live in a community where there's very rare testing going on at this point, do not try and jump the line to someone who's actually short of breath and, do, and really not doing well, just to make yourself feel better to know that you have it. Just take the precautions in your home that I said, and then as, resting te as testing ramps up, then we'll be able to, to get more people tested.